I like to call the order. Um, as far, uh, the last six meeting, uh, workshop meeting uh, between the Scarborough Town Council and Bosch, which is um, has plans to um, try to fundraise uh, monies for a hockey rink in the town of Scarborough. And uh, we're here to present um, their plans and uh, take field questions from the town council. So with that, um, I'll look for the uh, present presentation. Okay. Um, so very quickly, for those who may not know me, my name is Chuck Bradish, and I'll kick off the workshop with a quick overview of the journey that basically got us here today. Uh, we're hopeful that this overview will answer some of the questions that have been asked uh, today and prepare us for a good dialogue. All right, uh, but first I'd like to introduce some of the board members that are here this evening. Um, Jeff Murray uh, for fundraising, Lee Allen, design and construction, Mark Maroon, finance, and Bob Jakes, operations. Uh, the other board member that is not here this evening is Chelsea Woods, and she's our communications director. I also wanted to frame the expectations of the workshop from the FOSH perspective. Uh, we'd like town council and FOSH to align on input required to make a decision on the memorandum of understanding, right, regarding FOSH land use on Scarborough School campus. Uh, we'd like town council to specify any missing information from uh, tonight uh, relative to questions that are unanswered. Uh, we'd also like town council to specify if any changes to the MOU are needed, uh, again, prior to that meeting. So our current status. Um, we're here tonight because FOSH is at a point in our project uh, we're ready to kick off a, a major fundraiser. All right, uh, the fundraising initiative required certain elements before we could kick it off. Uh, those elements we feel are the business plan, which is complete, uh, facility construction design, which is also complete. Uh, we've been in the process of getting a 501c3 approval with the IRS for quite some time now. Uh, it has gone through the final approval process and we're expecting approval uh, anytime. That leaves the final piece, which is site location. Uh, we fir firmly believe that in order to kick off this fundraiser's initiative, we really need to identify a site location. Uh, and so hopefully tonight, we'll get a little closer to that decision. Fash, uh, FOSH background. Um, this all started May 2013 last year. I think some of you know this, but we'll go through it anyways. Um, Scarborough High School boys hockey and girls hockey lost a lot of their ice time, all right? Um, which led to basically getting ice time that's not ideal. Right? We have a lot of very early ice times uh, last season, and we're looking at the same, time, uh, the same thing this season. Uh, this season might actually even be a little more difficult because last season our AD, Mike LeGage, was very aggressive uh, and looked out for our interest and quickly went out and found a lot of ice for us uh, and secured that for the 2013-14 season. Um, in spring of 2014, the executive, uh, executive board, us, um, we moved to six members, and that's when we first submitted the 501c3, okay? And we started meeting with the town on different site uh, discussions. Motivating factors. Again, this comes out of the business plan, but there's three primary factors. Ice availability. Last year, again, Scarborough hockey teams practiced very early. There was actually 65 times where they had to practice at 530 in the morning. Ice proximity. Busing, when available to UNE and MHG last year, cost was about $30,000. Um, previous year's practices were also at USM and CCC, um, which basically means bus busing transportation is very expensive. Uh, ownership, we have no home ice, right? Um, there's no banners, there's limited fan access, um, and it's not like going to our, our, our turf field and having a home field advantage. We have no home locker room. That means the kids are lugging their bags in and out. And actually, last year, they actually had to lug them to school, keep them in the hallway downstairs, and then lug them home. Um, and there, there's no assurance ice is available at, at all uh, in the future years, right? So like I said, Mike was very good and aggressive last year and got us some good ice. We're still struggling this year. Objective, an ice arena to support not just high school hockey. You hear us say high school hockey a lot. Um, Right, because we have the, the, the girls' high school team, we've got the boys' varsity and JV team, we've got four potential middle school teams now, um, but it'll also sponsor local fig figure skating programs, um, town functions like Winterfest and just general open ice, school-based programs, 
one of the things, if it's it's local, um, the the PE classes might be able to leverage the ice for for different um, gym classes, community-based programs, senior, youth, open ice. But one of the other things that came to our attention, and even though it doesn't fit our business plan to keep the ice all year round, we do plan on pulling the ice out around April. Um, but once the ice is out, there's countless uses for the facility, mm -hmm. and we'd be very much open for that. Right. So if people approach it with ideas on how to use that ice. Uh, the ice surface, once it's out, we'd be happy to entertain those. All right, community benefits for Scarborough. Improved student access. Community adult and senior access. Reduced transportation costs. Economic opportunity for businesses near the rink. All right, we joke about it all the time. Every time when we go to rinks, we're constantly in before to the local businesses, whether it's Dunkin' Donuts or sandwich shops. And when we leave, we're often hitting pizza places or dinner after the games. Uh, no debt, no taxpayer burden. This was something that the that we worked on right from the beginning, right? We had no intent to impose any tax burden on anybody in the community, um, and we want to stick to that. If placed on town line, uh, town land, an extension of the town's infrastructure uh, could be supported, right? Um, one of the things that we've heard is that um, there's a town campus, right? And this would support that town campus um, concept. If placed on private land, it's still an anchor for local business, right, and, and for business growth. But, I want you know, emphasize this, we've been looking at a lot of property, but we want to get as close to high school as possible. It'll still help with transportation, and it'll still make it feel more like a home field advantage. And then just the overall improved quality of life through better amenities, right? The rink, the, the rink that we're constructing is going to be a very nice rink. It's going to be a high end, and it'll just be a nice, nice place to go to. All right, community benefits for local towns. Improved student access, a rink to call home, community adult and senior access, reduced transportation costs, again, no taxpayer burden, improved quality of life through better amenities. So, a couple alignment questions. Because it's our sense, FOSH, we've talked about this for a while, um, that the town council agrees that building a privately funded ice arena in Scarborough is a good idea, mm -hmm. right, just in general. Uh, it is our sense that town council feels that the Scarborough School campus is a good location for an ice arena. I'm not saying where it is, I'm saying but on the school campus. And so leaving that, the next question is where do we feel or where does the town council feel that location on the town campus would be? And with that, I close my opening statement. Okay, um a couple of things. Uh, now, where you're um, going to be uh, tax exempt status through the IRS, does that also uh, allow you, if you bought a piece of property, we'll say, for example, off, cam off the campus, privately owned here in the town, that still make you tax exempt from property? It, would, it wouldn't happen until the following right. April of that tax year. That would go off, would go off. Okay. So if you, you will say anywhere else in town, you, the town of Scarborough wouldn't be uh, collecting property taxes from you. Anyway. No, so there wouldn't be any taxes. Right. Uh, one of the other things that was uh, brought up is um, as far as um, as far as you. Uh, <coughs> In the mem memorandum of understanding, would you um, how how would it commit to the how would the other towns commit to this uh, to this program? Mm -hmm. As far as um, would they be signing up for saying ten years, twenty years, or no years? What so, kind of a commitment would you expect from uh, the two other towns? So part of that is part of fundraising. So I'll let Jeff answer that. <laughs> We've talked to the uh, uh, Cape Elizabeths very specifically about this, and the way this really works with all the ice rinks really in the area is there's no long-term agreement with any of the towns to the ice rink, but there's a functional agreement there. So, for example, uh, Gorham uh, skates at the University of Southern Maine. There's an understanding that they get a good look at what the ice opportunity is there, probably first, um, because of their locality. Um, Bonnie Eagle would probably fit into that same category. Just like in Falmouth, uh, there's uh, Falmouth, Yarmouth, other towns there. 
that are using that ice, they get first cracks at that ice. And so there is there a formal agreement? No, ultimately there's not a formal agreement associated with it. What we think is going to happen, however, is that we're going to see a financial commitment from the boosters of those towns to help us with the funding of the rink. In fact, the way that would likely work is that they would purchase locker rooms, and so they would have some ownership, some investment in the whole process, but in fact, probably not have a long-term contract with uh, with FOSH as part of the ongoing operations of the rink. Is, like a, we talked in earlier, that the, uh, they are, um, would be committed in a way that they'd be having, th this would be their home ice and they'd be uh, installing locker rooms. That's right, yeah. So That, that would be from their investment, right. their towns, or their booster club's investment of lockers and amenities and the, That's the correct. Water. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, one other thing that uh, the public asked me to make clear is that um, with the memorandum of understanding if done, um, that uh, no no building would start, no land, uh, I mean, no land, um, you know, uh, so, you know. Break, break, break ground. Well, what I'm saying is the land would not be given to you um, until the proper fundraising was made and you accomplished that goal of what the monies that it would take to build that building and outfit that facility is full. Yeah, I think I can answer that. As part of the planning board process, one of the, the triggers in the planning board process to get approval is you have to prove you have the financial capacity to actually go forward and build the project. So without having planning board approval, we couldn't start the project anyway. And that's built into the memo of understanding the kind of those checkpoints is, yeah, we get through this and we have to go to the planning board, that's the next checkpoint, then we have to come back to the town council to get um, some sort of land lease agreement with the town council. I'm just having a audience and the, uh, <coughs> citizens. Um, one of the other things um, that, that was a concern was traffic. Uh, another concern of the council will get into was uh, the uh, location. So, and, uh, so this would all have to go before the planning board and traffic studies and uh, <coughs> things of that nature with the regular planning board procedure would have to take place. Um, I may have some other questions later, but I'm going to um, you know, yield to any other councils that would start asking questions. Council yeah, Academy. I think we all do. Um, uh, thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for all of the um, information that you provided. Uh, as I know, I pretty much made clear to Mr. Maroon, I'm not wild about the location you guys would like to be in for a number of reasons. Traffic. Um, it's too close to high school. Um, I'd rather see it elsewhere on campus if we were to proceed with this. Um, so I'm going to ask why you chose that place and how married are you to it? Uh, I, I guess. Start with the first part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we chose that place because we saw that it was a good location that wasn't in the heart of the campus. It was more to the periphery of the campus. And that's what drew us to that. Why, why periphery instead of? Thinking down the road of wanting to draw interest from Cape Elizabeth or South Portland, it felt like if it was in the middle of the campus, that like, well, that's a Scarborough rink. We don't have any ownership, whereas it's on the outside, even though it's next to the high school, it's kind of more divested from the high school, mm -hmm. um, giving them more level of comfort. Um, that was our initial thinking. I don't know if that's completely still our thinking today, but okay. it, it is. that was originally why we were thinking there. And, and it's actually been a long process of, of picking a location. Sure. Um, and arguably six months, nine months ago, that wasn't at the top of our list. Okay. Um, but then as we started walking through what I call use cases uh, of, of who would be using the facility, it became apparent that it was definitely an attractive one, especially from the student standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, now, how viable it is, you're bringing up good points. I, uh, we don't know, and that is one of the reasons why we're here tonight. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I know... Personally, and this is just me, it's no one else on the council. You know, I, to me, that's a non-starter, that location, just so you'll know. Okay. Unless you can convince me might, otherwise. Might, might, <laughs> might I ask why, why is that? Uh... I just, I, I, I think it's too close to Oak Hill. Um, I think 
I'm very visual, artistic -y type of architectural type of person, and I think it's going to look squeezed in there. I had asked Mark for some diagrams or painting or something, and I still haven't seen it as to how it's going to look as far as you know facade and edifice and how it matches with the high school. But the other part of that is, you know, this building isn't being built for two years or five years. You know, hopefully it's going to be there for a long, long time and used for a long, long time. Uh, what if the high school, for whatever reason, needs to expand? The natural place for the high school to expand may be into that direction, plus displacement of high school parking. Gotcha. So I've got th those are those are the issues you know that I'm concerned about. Just mm -hmm. so you'll know. Yeah, no good. That's what we want to hear, sir. Yeah. Okay. And, and and to the point. So we do have um, renderings that we'll provide to you. Okay. So you'll have not only just the front view I didn't from see the parking one I lot. Liked. But we'll also give you the views from the street, so you yeah. get a better. Yeah, because I want to see what the. Yeah, because like. I can't. You know, from what you've given me, I, I still can't quite figure out what it's going to look like, okay. like from the street. Absolutely. Or from, um, Grandins, or from you know, because it needs to me, it needs to be visually we will attractive. Get, we'll get those too. To um and. If I could, I got a couple other questions. Uh, my other concerns, and I'm glad to hear that you're open to use of this facility in your so-called off-season, because mm -hmm. I can certainly see this as being a place for graduation, for example. Um, summer yeah. fest if it rains. Um, just a number of different uses, community uses for this facility. And another thing that I looked at when I looked at your uh, architectural drawings, the most recent ones, and maybe I'm incorrect because I f didn't go back and look at the other ones, you have a so-called party room. And, and that's okay, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Yeah. I don't care what you call it. Function. Uh, function. function. <laughs> it look, okay, function. That's better. I know. You call it a party room. I'm thinking, these guys must be hockey guys. No, I didn't. Uh, but is it? Like <laughs> I know. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. However, that being said, I've, it, to me, if you could have more function room or a couple of function rooms that you could offer to senior use during the day, perhaps. I mean, I'm just thinking of, I would like to see this building able to be used by as many people in town as possible because not everyone skates. I love to skate. I'm looking forward to it. But there's going to come a day when I'm be too old to skate. So I would like to, you know, see other uses and I think that it would go a long way in in um, putting aside a lot of people's concerns about this. So that that's where I'm coming from and that's all. If, if I might just address yeah, that specifically. Sure. So I think we have heard pretty clearly over the last couple of months this question about uh, multi-use of this facility right. and of course we've come at it from an angle of looking to try to address a problem that sure. we were facing. Absolutely. Um, however, in doing so, when we put together the business plan, for example, we looked at the finances to see if the building would sustain itself with the needs that we had for it. But we always spoke, even at that time, about what if somebody wanted to use the building in June or July or right. August, right? What, how would that go? And from a business perspective, it's simply this. If the function, whatever that is, supports the operation of the building during that time frame, Fantastic idea. So right. if we came up with a, you know, a soccer camp to go inside right. that in July, that's if it idea. meets the needs and, and all comes out from a zero dollar perspective, I think that's a fantastic okay. idea. And we, that has been a consistent discussion internally for us, though maybe not made publicly. Right. right. So that's why I asked, because I wanted you to be able to put that out, because I know I hear that over and over and over again from constituents. The so. graduation thing, by the way, is a fantastic idea. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, that was my first idea. <laughs> had, never, had never even considered yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And to the point, we, we do need but. to identify those other ones, though, because one of the concerns when we first started thinking about use in the summer, it's a 98-degree day. Well, not right. this year, but, you know, on a day that it's warm, will the HVAC sustain right. that type exactly. of thing? So we need to clarify what those other uses might be yep. in the off-ice time. Yep. Uh, so that we can make sure infrastructurally we have the right facility for that. And, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to ask one more thing, because this is my latest kick, is you have you looked at solar, putting solar on there? Do you have solar exposure to help reduce some of the utility costs? And it, It's not something that we've looked at to date, but we haven't got to the point where we've started looking at design of HVAC uh, systems either. So I'm just when throwing that out the road, there. Absolutely. I'm going solar in two weeks, so that's why I asked. Also, the only question I have is liability. If 
someone gets hurt in this facility, there is no way to prevent them from suing the town of Scarborough. What would you do with that? I'd like to take that on. Actually, I've been doing some homework for pricing uh, with part of the modeling uh, with a couple of the agencies. I also was involved with the the uh, Cumberland County Civic Center's negotiation for the contract with their, uh, when I was a chairman, the uh, uh, treasurer for the Cumberland County Civic Center, we brought back the insurance issues there and reviewed them again because the town of Portland and the county had concerns for the same issue. Uh, those issues have been uh, managed through, the good news is I was made from two companies that I talked to, that that is not an issue. There's enough protection. Anybody can sue anybody for anything, oh, yeah. as you know. Yeah. But the way you set up the not the, um, and I'm drawing a blank of the exact term, but there's a there's a procedure in the insurance that basically puts the ownership of any issues that would happen at the rink in the rink's hand. And um, again, that would be a requirement under any circumstances with any business for that matter, um, having insurance in my business nine tenants, all of them have to have special insurance that indemnify me. We would have to indemnify the town the same way. I think that's the word I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, we'd have, uh, we didn't, I assume, insist on hold harmless and indemnification language on top of them having their own insurance. So you do everything possible under the law to insulate yourself. But oftentimes suits uh, cast a wide net. But that gives you very good defenses uh, should something come forward. I think that's an issue that can be dealt with. And we were looking at very high insurance policies, not a million dollars. We were looking at $10 million and up for, for coverage. We wanted to make sure that if anything happens, you get, you, when, in that kind of environment, you've got to make sure it's protected. So, the, and there's model after model left a model of these kinds of programs across the country with public-private partnerships that have established the setting and ground rules for that. Does that help? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you talking strictly the the hockey portion of it? Uh, or, yeah, about insurance? Would it be general liability? Or would it be but everything? Everything. It, every, it, when you talk general liability for insurance purposes, that we what I was looking at was somebody coming to that rank for any reason, or even not coming to that rank, getting hurt for any reason on the the property. That would be classified as the rink, because it could be somebody that gets hit, in a, you know, walking across the street by somebody that's coming out of the rink. It mm -hmm. could be, there's so many things that have to factor into that equation. But again, the good news is this is not a new model. This has been repeated over and over again across the country. And when I talk to the insurance companies, there's one here in Portland, believe it or not, that uh, does nothing but uh, well, they don't do anything. But they have a whole division, and they insure, I think, nine of the rinks just in Maine. Uh, so we've got some solid information from them and background history. Just as a further comment, there are particular protections in state law uh, for public recreation. So uniquely, the, the town is well positioned. Uh, nearly everything we do, we have tremendous, potentially tremendous exposure. And that exposure really would paralyze us from doing much of what we do and what's expected of us. So state law provides for that. There's uh, notion of sovereign immunity and there's also tort claims limitations so uh, there's multiple layers of defense here that I think uh, would come to play for sure um, Council Benedict did you have anything else? Yes al although the, the, the might be lawyers and law firms insurance policies and everything else you still cannot prevent an individual from suing. Okay. I can't disagree with that. I think the laws need to be changed, but I, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> I think the laws should be changed, but I can't help that. I mean you're right. Anybody can sue anybody. So that the town of Scarborough could be on the hook. I think Mr. Hall could better answer the hook part. There's certainly ways to protect our, protect the town's interest. Uh, I don't think that, in the whole scheme of things, should be an impediment to this relationship. I'm confident there's a way to address and protect ourselves to the fullest extent possible. I don't view that as an insurmountable task. I think there's some other issues that might 
To, to that end, right? Is there something that you see differently in, for example, the use of this rink on, on the campus potentially that would be different, for example, than a football game or a soccer game or a basketball game being played on the campus? Do those do you see those as different entities, or do you see the same risk in those endeavors? They have the same risk, but they're not in a situation where land is sold for less money and there's no taxes on it. So I guess I'd, I'd see the, uh, because the risk there is probably the same, in fact, might even be higher because then it is directly on the town itself or the school department, yeah, I suppose, it's right? A, it's a risk um, that we don't necessarily need to take. Fair point. Uh, we would pr be in a position potentially of insulating the town at some level whatever that happens to be, the, the laws are not are not my uh, uh, expertise, but uh, we would be in some level insulating from that with the insurance that Mark spoke to uh, a moment ago. So uh, is there a risk for all of that? Absolutely. Um, but uh, I think it exists in other walks as well. <clears throat> okay, I just have a couple of quick questions. Um, I'm curious, when you take the, talk about taking the ice down in April, I think you said, what, as, I, as Councillor Katarina said, I, I'm also interested in what else we can do to use this facility when you're not having hockey games on it. Um, when that ice comes down, what what is that flooring like underneath it? I'm just, I'm just curious. What? It's, it's, it's concrete. It's concrete. Yes. So you, basically we could do numerous things absolutely on that and it wouldn't okay even if uh, long, long term if uh, summer hockey camps uh, clinics etc cetera, etc cetera, it, it could be where we go from being shut down to three months a year to two months a year to you know long term mm -hmm. if you know the rink is capable of being open year round, but short term you know we know that we can only do it uh, October through April so okay. that's how we're planning Interesting. But it would certainly support other functions. Uh, graduation is an interesting yeah. example of something yeah. like that, but there are certainly other functions like that that might be useful for the town or its citizens. Yeah, I think um, our seniors have been lacking and have been very patient for numerous years um, and need some need something. We need to figure that out at some point here soon. Um, so to, I think may, it's, I, may I add to that? Sure, of course. Okay. Um, I would love to understand the, the ideas, mm -hmm. right, um, so that we could better forward looking, mm -hmm. uh, look at what would have to happen. Because mm -hmm. we have talked about this from the beginning. Um, we realize that uh, an ice rink is an ecosystem, mm -hmm. right, and mm -hmm. it plays off the, the heating from cooling the ice, believe it or not, to heat the rest of the building. Um, so we want to, we'd have to think the opposite Correct. if we're trying to keep it cool. So if mm -hmm. we could identify what those possibility usages mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. uh, we could better look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Something for us to think about and figure out. I know you, Ed, works a lot with some of our seniors. That maybe is something that you could bring up. I don't know. Um, I do think it's important to mention that our our um, our varsity girls hockey team won the state title this year. Um, to me, living across the street from one of those players, I think that's an important thing um, or something to be recognized even though um, they did have to have some of those times which I find horrifying mm -hmm. um, those girls and the boys teams are that's how dedicated they are um, and that's one reason why I seeing their dedication I know that those are they have the kind of parents that are going to work really hard to make this happen um, having parents who get up at five o'clock in the morning five days out of the week to drive their kid to get to hockey practice shows me dedication um and so i think that's something to keep in mind um, uh, i think i i had a little bit of a concern where of where the placement was but not probably not not as not as high level as um counselor katarina but um I would be open to seeing other spots, but I do really like the thought that 
those kids can walk mm -hmm. safely um, to that arena and we're not having kids tromping through traffic and um, things like that. So I think there's, there's a couple of things in there that as we move forward, we could probably get through. But I think that's it for me. I can understand uh, that you cannot get long-term contractual commitments from the neighboring towns that have expressed a strong interest in this. ADs and principals and superintendents and school boards don't really have the power to enter into 10-year uh, contracts uh, that would bind them uh, to a plan that the town may go in a different direction. Uh, but what that does is it raises the question, and we've all heard and, and respect you people for the job you've done, but how do we be assured beyond a verbal assurance that the town won't be uh, subject to a financial burden from this project because of you people move on, people get new jobs, people move, uh, people grow, grow older. <laughs> So, so there's all these factors that bring to, to mind legitimate questions about how do we protect ourselves against the risk of having to fund this project in the future. Yeah, I, I, think, I've, I mean, I think this is a very fair question, right? And it, it's one of these where maybe uh, past performance does not predict future results, but uh, what I can tell you, <laughs> but, but what I can tell you is what we've learned over the years. So many of us have been involved in youth hockey and, mm -hmm. and, and hockey as a whole here in the, in the greater Portland area for a lot of years. Um, for the past 15, I've been coaching youth hockey, and for four of those, I was the president of a local youth hockey program. And in those years, I've witnessed the difficulties that there are to obtain ice at times that are reasonable for kids to play hockey. Uh, back when I was the president of the organization, I was routinely arguing with the rink manager about the fact that I did not wish to have the ice time that started at 9 o'clock on a Wednesday night or Thursday night, and nor did I want the 5 a.m. practice on Saturday morning. And I simply wouldn't book that ice for the youth program that we ran. Now, that exists. Those ice times exist, and they're being used, um, sometimes for high school students, sometimes for the adult leagues and so forth that exist. But... What I can say for sure is that there is need for ice in the area. And I, we've got a host of evidence. I'd be happy to share all of that with you. No, nothing hidden here at all. Um, but we know that there is needs for ice in this area. And the sport as a whole is growing. The number of participants in the sport have grown over the last uh, 15 years, as I've seen it here in, in my experience. And that's at the grade levels, the youth levels, as well as at the high school levels. So I think we'd find that there's not much uh, concern about that, though there certainly is no guarantee about how that goes. Could I add? So the other thing, because I've been thinking about this a lot too, and that is definitely it, right? So I've been playing or involved in hockey since I was five. So the sport is, I'm hoping, going to go for another 46 years. I'm 51, right? The other thing that comes to mind is as we've gone under, t taken this undertaking of building a rink, we've gone through so much energy to find out if it's a viable concept, right? Can we actually use all the ice? Can we actually survive, right? Can we actually go year in and year out by selling ice time and, and make it not fall into debt? I would only imagine that if another town was thinking about putting an ice rink in, whoever they put in charge of that would go through the same diligence and look and go, wait a minute, there's an ice rink in Scarborough. Why aren't you using that ice, right? And if they can come up with a business plan that says, yes, we need that sheet of ice, which is what we're doing, and all the other sheets of ice, right? Then I, I think then I think we're safe, right? So if they do move out and we're using all the ice and they still need more ice, I think that's an okay thing. And I can see that happening, right? The outdoor rink in FIC right now, that's going in there because there's a huge, a huge opportunity for more skaters. They identified like 150 more players that they can get playing hockey in Falmouth by having that open air ice arena, right? So there was a need. They filled the need with that open air. We feel we have a need. We're going to fill it with this. Right? And curiously, that doesn't impact, that particular project doesn't impact anything that we're doing here. 
Can I just ask a follow-up? It begs the question. I mean, if what you say is true, and I have every reason to believe it is, uh, why isn't there a private concern that steps in? What, it sounds like there's money to be made. There's ice to be rented. No, actually, that's, that's the issue. There is no money to be made. This is a Well, then it goes to Councillor Donovan's point. Uh, if there's no money to be made, it takes some level of subsidy, a partnership of sorts, and, and again, to the point, what assurances do we have that it's a going concern, will be a going concern? Uh, well, number one, when I was invited to join the board as for the financial side, the first thing I said as I walked in the door is if we're talking about doing financing on this project, I'm not interested. And if we're talking about not doing this as a nonprofit, I'm not interested. Because we know the math. Um, the math does not support bonding, and it does not support taxes. The math supports a finished building that's set up and designed with a, a uh, depreciation formula that is held in account to refund and repair equipment as needed. And it has to have a, a smart, long-term financial vision. The, the value of ice today in this market is $225 an hour. That's what it is. It's below market value. Mm. So when we talk about a partnership, when I thought of a partnership with the, the town, I don't think of it a partnership with the town as being financially supporting the process, but rather this is a project that would never come forward under bonding. I would never vote for it uh, under bonding, nor would I vote for a pool or a, uh, any other thing like that. So in the, in the process I went through with my head, how would I look at you and say, as a former counselor, how would I look at you and say, yeah, this makes sense and you should believe what we're saying? Well, in the, 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 the articles of, that need to be spelled out that have nothing to do with the, the, the uh, the MOU, it will break down very specific behaviors and requirements and establishments and, and reviews from accounting and nothing, no different than anything that we have to deal with every year. And the, the truth is, with no debt, and we'll just take it right to its worst case scenario, with no debt and minimal fixed costs, if for whatever reason this team, which would consist of towns, townspeople, Town officers, school officers, people in the in the in the, in the uh, hockey arena, in, in the hockey uh, fields and, and desires. If this model doesn't work, which hasn't been seen, that I can't imagine that analogy based on the math we've done. But if it doesn't, you shut it down. And you have a free storage area that somebody paid 5.5 million dollars for, but you didn't. So I'm being somewhat flippant with it, but the truth is, the town, worst case scenario, gets a built building for them they can do anything they want with that but the truth is the math carries itself fine with a tailored down and Jeff did a phenomenal job of breaking down from the peak of February right down as it tails down to the, the last few weeks of the seasons and we built this model a 12-month model based on only that shorter term knowing full well that if we increase the uses the use insurance is insurance that's fixed no matter what we do it'll allow us to have more the more we bring in, the longer we can get, the more activities we can bring in, the more things that are done in the summer when we're not using ice, only drop to the bottom line to secure maintenance and repair in the vision. That has to be part of the component. So I really feel comfortable with, those, with the fact that although it could happen, the town is in the mix of the, of the team from day one. They always know what's going on. There's never a secret. You're not going to get a phone call saying, by the way, we need $10 to turn lights back on. Because you're there as part of the, the FOSH board. So I really can't imagine a scenario with a free building with the reserves in place managed properly that, can, that, that scenario could play out. It's another way to uh, create a financial risk for the town <clears throat> is for the facility to not be managed well. Uh, we have uh, a very successful community services department uh, and, pro and program, which is largely self-sustaining. And uh, uh, are you uh, anticipating that there will be a collaborative effort here which will avail yourselves of the expertise that the town has to uh, protect the town against the financial risk of the property not being run well. Okay. 
So uh, a couple things. Um, the way we've designed the board, right now we're in, uh, the, we've looked at it in two phases. So this phase, the board is focused on what we're calling a, a project structure, right? We need to design, raise funds, and construct. But post, when we switch and design transfer over to an operational board, right, they're the ones that are going to make sure that, that on a day-to-day -day operations within week, within year, it's sustainable. As part of that board, we will have representation from the town to ensure right, that they have oversight and early indicators that something is going wrong and they'll have a voice in that board. All right. Now the other thing about scheduling, this rink cannot run without a rink manager. It's just not possible. Right? It is a full-time job for that gentleman or lady, right? as well as a team of temporary people in order to keep that running. Right? So it's not a part-time job for someone. It's not the board. It's not booster volunteers. Right? This is a paid full-time job. It just so as, a, as an example, that most of the rinks in the area have a full-time rink manager, and they're responsible f typically for everything from scheduling the ice to maintaining the building to making sure the ice, the Zamboni is run in between ice sessions. So they have a host of different responsibilities, usually one person responsible for all of that on the, well, I'll say the lighter operational times. Uh, and then when uh, times are busier, uh, middle of the winter, January, February, you know, when the ice is being used heavily, then a part-time staff would come in to support that extra person. But that's a very typical for any of the rinks that are in the area here as to how they're run. D does your business plan uh, uh, rely upon uh, uh, super early and super late hours of rental? The way that we've mapped it out right now, uh, the earliest ice time would be 5.30 in the morning, which is something we've talked about before. I think the latest was stopped at 10 or stopped at 11? Stopped, stopped at 11 o'clock, so the, off the ice by 11 o'clock. So uh, that, that was the way we mapped out the ice times. And um, some rinks are in the area go later than that, and some start a little earlier than that. Some of the men's leagues start at like 5 o'clock, and some of the men's leagues go in you know, past midnight sometimes even. But um, the way we've mapped things out was something on the order of 5.30 to 11. I think it goes without saying, but I'll ask the, the question anyways, that it, you obviously will have <clears throat> um, uh, reserve accounts uh, for <clears throat> maintaining the facility in proper order. Uh, if there were a revenue stream beyond that, <clears throat> uh, are we correct that uh, no funds would ever uh, go for the benefit of anything other than two things, this hockey rink mm -hmm. and the town? That's correct. That's yes. correct. Yeah, the 501c3 is very clear, the nonprofit. Any funds raised must go back into the facility, right. right? And so the way our business plan cites it is that we actually have <coughs> set aside in there for one year's poor operational, right? So we said, listen, we're not going to expect that we sell every hour of ice, and hopefully we will, right, the first year out. So we have that as a contingency. On top of that, the year-to-year -year budget, right, income and expense, applies for reserves so that when you need to redo the roof, when you need to buy a new Zamboni, right, when your compressors die, all that has to be into the fund, right? So that's all been taken into consideration. Talking just so it's not so obvious, oh, right? One thing I'd suggest. Russell Holbrook's joining us. Um, before I wanted, no, I still have no problem. Did you need to say something? No, I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought he was done. Um, we would like to be able to um, come to grips with the realities of this, and one of them is the site. Uh, mm. uh, and there has been expressions of concern about the site and about allowing a private entity to actually have a significant presence on the municipal campus. Uh, is the driving fa force or factor for the location that you've suggested that it has a certain visibility 
and if there were other sites on the campus, the municipal campus, that fulfilled that, are, are you locked into this one site, or is that a point of discussion? It, it is definitely a point of discussion. Right. There are, there are a couple of things that were attractive with that location, right? I mean, that are less than a 100-yard walk for the kids, right? That's obviously attractive. Um, Lee brought it up earlier. We felt, and this was not expressed by the other hockey programs, but we felt that if it was on the peripheral of the campus, it would feel more like a, um, a, a public entity, right? And so teams coming in from out of town would feel more comfortable. Don't know if that's true. That was our, our personal view, right? And the final one was just pure visibility, right, right there on that corner. But we are definitely open to opportunity, other uh, site Can't locations. <laughs> Uh, would we be able to uh, uh, reach a memorandum of understanding uh, agreement with you that uh, commits to the municipal campus, but not a particular site? I think it's likely. I think, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Probably the reason why I say yes, and we are saying yes, is because I think it's there's limited, right? right. Uh, it's not like you're going to put us in a place that is completely undesirable. There is not an undesirable, and, and Tom has mapped out a few there uh, for discussion. So, um, yeah. And I, and I ask that because I think it's this, this sort of discussion, you have to get a consensus amongst a group of people. That's why we hold these right. workshops, so that we can talk about it. That's great. Uh, and so that, that <laughs> probably would facilitate things tremendously if we weren't bound to come to a commitment tonight on that or tomorrow or next week yeah to be clear I, I think that this group's opinion is that we were looking for a, a working arrangement here one that benefits the town and what the goals of what this organization has right ultimately that is some of the things that Chuck spoke to earlier about available ice the location of the ice the proximity of it and the fact that we think that this supports something good for the for the town for the school to have something that we would consider to be home ice just like we have a football field or baseball field and, and a gym for the basketball players all those things are good and they have value i think this has the same whether it sits immediately next to the school or whether it sits in some other location on the town campus that all said those things are all very appealing because <coughs> kids get out of school or before school whenever it is but they walk to and from just as they may with any of their other activities and that makes it very valuable to be in this location you know if it doesn't work then it doesn't work but um, you know that's uh, that's the view of this group something that I think has been raised by a number of people but uh, <coughs> uh, I think is hasn't really been touched on this evening is do you have the ability to tell us and the public what the value of the benefits are of having dollar value of the benefits of having this facility on this campus and I ask that because uh, the proposal that has been made asks for a, a, a minimal rent uh, but what I'd like to understand and I think the public wants to understand is uh, are we saving enough money and, and creating benefits for the community that far exceed whatever the rent would, mm -hmm. the fair market value the rent would be. Yeah, I think the way that probably balances out is in this way. Uh, originally, we built a business plan that suggested purchasing land um, at a private location. That was initially the intent. Um, once discussion started with the town, obviously that changes the equation a little bit. And, and it becomes part of this larger discussion that we're having tonight, which is where we may have started with a rink and for the benefit of the hockey players and so forth. We, that's what we saw initially, but we start to see this broader piece, as we've talked about tonight, that benefits the community further than just some number of, of hockey players that we can count up and, and speak to. So then we start getting to this discussion about costs and benefits. Well. I don't know that we can always put a dollar figure directly on it. I can tell you what we put in the budget, what we were going to pay, you know, what we thought we might pay for land. I don't know whether it's accurate or not accurate because we don't know what that piece of land might have been that we might have purchased. But when we start looking at the value associated with it and whether there's a realistic expectation that, well, this place that we've spoken about, putting the rink, if that would ever be sold, 
I can't imagine that it would. So is there a value that can be put on that land? I, I don't know. I, I get into a kind of a circular discussion there, I guess. So I, I, I think, yes, there's there's three pieces, right? So the, the cost of land, and you could basically say that could possibly be divided over 30 years, right? And say that might be a, a, a lease number, right? The second one is the busing transportation, right? With that busing transportation not having, that is a savings. There's, there's no doubt that that is a savings, right? The other one is potentially we have um, identified a large yearly maintenance fee, right, for plowing and, and clearing and weed whacking and all that. Depending on where it's located on the campus, maybe part of that is a common area. And so some of that funding would be less, right? But we'd have to look at exactly where we ended up and who was going to account for some of those yearly expenses. What have you estimated is the savings to the school's uh, transportation budget? So uh, generally <laughs> speaking, we've discussed numbers that range anywhere from uh, twenty to thirty thousand dollars as as the cost of busing for the three high school programs for practices and home games, which essentially goes away if the students are doing this right on campus. And and that money is presently not in the school budget. That money is presently paid for by fundraising. The uh, ice times and bus costs have changed over the course of the last few years. Um, the boys hockey boosters, the girls hockey boosters have uh, had to put in different amounts of money for a variety of different purposes over the last few years. Um, it's been a changing endeavor as the school budget has changed. This, this particular year though, we will, it's been cl very clear that we will have to pick up all practice busing, um, the boosters. Uh, Jeff being the president of the girls and president of the boys. Um, but all the home and away games that will be traveled to um, is still being picked up by uh, the high school. Okay. How much is that? I don't know that I have a clean breakdown of that and th that split. And, and it'll, it'll be different this year, right? Because one of the things is we're hoping to find ice locally for our home games, um, but that has not been nailed down yet. So the schedule of home and away games has not been identified. So if we're traveling a great distance, that expense is obviously going to be more. Are there middle school teams presently? Yes. Do they incur transportation costs? All The, the whole middle school program is not a sanctioned uh, program, um, primarily because if anybody understands uh, club hockey, club hockey um, <laughs> basically uses up a lot of the kids' time, and so they're really required to play on Sundays, and that is one of the rules that students can't play on Sundays and that is when middle school hockey is played is on Sundays so, so it's, it's, it's the full yeah. the boosters pays for the entire program even the insurance associated with it okay. and parents and parents, parents. yes yeah, sorry move the, move the kids to and from yep. okay thank you um, so I my apologies, I got up at work. So some of this may have already been gone over and, and why not, so, um, but here's my 11th hour, two cents. Um, I, I, I'm happy to hear that you're considering other locations, but that's really been a major hang up of my own. Um, no matter how I slice it, no matter how I look at it, it's buildable land. And clearly your project shows that that land is, is, is buildable. And if I've learned everything, over the last couple of years, you know, Wentworth is a prime example of what happens when you do not have opportunity to expand on site. So the high school location in itself is extremely limited. You have a cliff on one side, you have Payne Road on the other. There are only two directions for that building to go. Um, you know, I, I would be warmer to the concept of, of some kind of an agreement in a different location. Um, the other thing that I would like to kind of talk to you about and, and broach with you is to be considering alternatives. Because no matter how you slice it, I don't think your business model is going to change and that you're asking for some type of land and, and low cost rent. Um, that is unique in that we don't normally do that, not, not since my time here. Um, although we have had projects along the way, there is some type of return and investment for instance, our broad term project, the return for the taxpayers' investment is that there are new taxpayers coming into the system. So, you know, yes, we have land on funds that have some preservation, but there is a return for investment. 
same thing with the library. The library is the only other identity I can really identify with. The return for the investment is during regular business hours. Anybody in this town or you know anywhere walks through the doors. You have a very limited scope of who you're benefiting. So what I'm going to ask you is to think about how can you broaden that scope so that there's a better return to the public's interest in it. So look at those summer months, you know, what do you have for your space? And this goes back to what I was saying, what can you be to be more of a community center, not just a hockey rink? If there's an offset in cost, you know, community services pays for, you know, space and programming, is that something community services can do in the summer months in your off season? So again, you know, the, the, the more you can make a positive as far as what you can bring into that building, is easier to go to the public with and say, this is your return. This is your benefit. Right. Um, I'm sure I missed. But, but at the same time, we're, we're, we're not complete. Yeah, they're right. We need some we need some collaboration right. back and forth of what those opportunities might be because we want to ensure the facility is capable of uh, sustaining that type of um, opportunity. And, you know, the other thing, too, is in a summer you know, perhaps there's a greater opportunity to do more. You know, I know you were limited with your space before. You know, that was something I had brought up before about being interested in. You know, we talked for years about a community center. If you're on a different location, maybe it's a partnership because there is room to have, you know, some kind of a meeting space in there. Or you know, so if, you know, if you're not tied to that space, there's more opportunity. Um, the last thought I had was. Um, and I think I made Tom cringe this week. Um, <laughs> just uh, once? <laughs> just, well, yeah. Um, I, I would really like you to spend some time, um, and, and it was something I brought up. Certainly, we're not looking to hold a referendum on, on this, but we did explore what are some opportunities to kind of engage the public to find out what the community feeling is for this. Um, as a counselor, that's going to be important to me because I don't think, even if you expand your usage a little bit, what, you know, what's the public good? I, I'm struggling to find that as a counselor. I, I don't doubt or, or negate that it benefits the hockey teams and the programming for that, but it is a limited group. So um, to explore some options, maybe it's a non-binding question through the November election. It's a simple process of printing some papers, um, asking what the community feels about it. And do you support having some kind of a hockey program? Uh, or maybe it's, you know, we engage the poll uh, on the website. I mean, there are options for that. Uh, but maybe to explore what the community sentiment is a little bit. Um, as we come on process, so. Councilor um, Benedict? I just have one quick question as I'm, as I'm listening. Uh, I initially heard that the busing was $30,000 last year. <coughs> and now you're telling us that we're going to be saving the town $30,000. If my mind serves me correctly, half the games are at home and the other half are away. So you're only saving half the transportation cost. On the game front. On the game front. Yeah. So twenty to $30,000, where did that come from? So, well... The figures we've received are from Mike Legage. All right, Mike has been providing us with the figures, the, the exact breakdown. If you look at it, the game to um, the game to practice ratio is what, probably three, four to one. Yeah, other way around, right? So right, so practice. four four practices to one game. Yeah. So, so when we look at those dollars, right, I mean, it's just do some really simple. You've got uh, maybe 10 away games each year, 10 home games each year, but you probably have 40 to 50 practices each year. So there's a dramatic number more of practices. So if you think about that tra from a transportation perspective, if you don't have to bus somebody mm -hmm. to 40 practices, for example, and you don't have to bus them to 10 games for the home game portion of things, all you have left at that juncture is the 10 away games. So the 10 away games still exist, no doubt about it. We still have to go to those other locations, but we've potentially saved that 40 to 50, well, in that case, maybe 40 practice plus 10 home game transportation ease for the varsity team. Also would be true of the junior varsity team and then for the girls varsity team. So 
I don't know that I have all those numbers exactly right, but it's on that order of magnitude at least that you're you're talking about. I can understand that, but I think that the the, the, the public would like to know it that way too. I know nothing about hockey. I don't even pretend. <laughs> okay. Not too late. <laughs> as, as you can see by my transportation cost, I look at it as, you know, I look at it as half a home, half a way. Yeah. Right. So, the, and that's true when you speak of, say, the soccer team, for example, right? The, the half, exactly of the, half, of, half of the home I, I games are here. Fifteen years in high school. And so, that's exactly how we look at it. And so, when my <laughs> son plays soccer, he leaves the school, he goes down the locker room, changes up, and they walk down to the field. And for every home game, they do the same thing, and they grab a bus when they're going to Gorham or whatever other town that they're going to for an away game. That could be true of the hockey program if there's a. Uh, ice rink here at the town campus with the way it is today every time they go to practice and every time they go to a home game and every time they go to an away game they always have to take a bus because there is no ice here for that purpose for any of those other purposes and, and, and similar um, because we also get on the emails of the swim team and the swim boosters uh, they also have the same situation they need to bus oh, the yeah. kids right to, to the practice because exactly. there is not a pool on the on the campus. I but, but I think in, in, in <laughs> your memory of understanding, you should put stuff like that in there. Stupid people like me <laughs> that don't know a darn thing about the hockey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Blades, did you have something? Yeah, just, just a quick item on, on the busing. You said before that the boosters pay for all the busing for practices. School only pays for busing to and from games, right? So the, the, what Jeff was saying is it, this has changed over the years. I've been booster president now for a fourth year, um, and I never heard anything about busing dollars uh, three years ago um, because that was covered by the school. Um, what, I, what I ended up paying for was ice time and socks and some jerseys. Um, but as the school budget has been challenged, um, that has changed. And in the last two years, We've gone to picking up the practices primarily, primarily because it was off hours. The 5:30, you can't get school buses that are picking up kids to also take them to practices. So we picked up those funds, um, but there was enough funds uh, in that and on the school uh, AD to cover some more ice than he normally would on the busing side. So we picked up busing, and he picked up more ice. This year, that has changed again. We have not only busing but also ice. So you uh, can't really identify a number for us. Um, we could we could work it, with Mike. It varies from year to year. It does. Know. It truly does. And, and and again, if we end up having all our home games in, let's have fun, Toronto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be very, it's gonna be very expensive. Is the building gonna be air conditioned okay. in the winter? <laughs> in the winter. Sorry, sorry. That, that's one of the questions we have. So um, when we were looking at HVAC, and now we're going to have to really study this because to extend it to more opportunities off ice time, uh, we got to look at the HVA system and determine in order to make that a, a palatable climate, what's it going to take to make that happen? So we may end up going with a uh, HVA system that has air conditioning. You ought to also have some sort of a uh, estimate on the flooring. Put the ice up, and you're going to have a hockey pro uh, I can tell a you cross or a soccer. One million dollars. One million dollars. Price of flooring. So it's probably not in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> to protect it, you mean? Put foot in, in a. Oh, well, over like a floor, you're saying? That's over ice. Over ice. Over ice. Yeah. Over ice. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not talking We're about ice. Okay. I think it's what you're saying is protect. In, in the summer. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's not protect it. Floor. Yeah, but you're not, you're not going to put kids out there playing well, soccer. Yeah, you have to have <laughs> Okay, one other question. You're running this thing in the wintertime from 5.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. You're talking about Scarborough, uh, South Portland, Cape Elizabeth using it, and you're also probably talking about possibly other schools coming in and getting ice light. Odds and ends ice, uh, also men's league, figure skating. Okay, but my point is, this 5.30 to 11, you're saying, hey, you know, there's time in there for the public. 
Is the public going to get the 5.30 a.m. and 11 p.m.? <laughs> Actually, they get pretty good hours. So, so I mean, I, I think there's, there's, that's a, an item that ultimately gets decided by the board that runs the rink, okay? And to be clear, that includes somebody from the town of Scarborough, somebody from the school department in Scarborough, and somebody from each from the uh, school boards that we would be working with, presumably Cape Elizabeth, maybe South Portland, right? So as well as three members that are ad hoc members. So um, just to be certain of that, ultimately they will decide that. But the way we have uh, penciled in the, uh, what I'll call the community ice, is midday ice throughout the weekdays as well as on the weekends. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Council of I, I might have missed this, at, um, and if I did it, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize, but who's maintaining this after this is built? Like, we're going to need janitors, I'm assuming, and people that do the Zamboni, Zamboni, right? Zamboni, right? Um, who's, who's dealing with those people after this is done? Right, so uh, every facility, and we've visited a great deal of them, uh, has a rink manager, and the rink manager will not only maintain the facility, but do any hiring mm -hmm. that he needs, um, whether it's temp hiring or any permanent hiring he may need, to everything from cleaning to painting and maintenance, right, to rink um, managers, right, that are going to be out on the ice during public skating sessions, so when running the skate sharpener, all those activities. Okay. So he will be responsible for his group of people. And he we, reports the board, to the board. What's that? He reports to the board? Yes. Right. We, the board, will hire that individual. Got it. Right. And Good. keep reviews on. Good. Thank you. Well, I was going to try to wrap things up. So I, I just got one quick comment. Um, I, I just haven't heard anybody talk about the unquantifiable savings that's out there, and that is you do have a number of young people. I used to be a teacher, and I used to teach kids who played hockey and did ice skating at god awful hours of the morning and night, and they were falling asleep in class. Um, so, I mean, I just want to point that out, too, that if kids are more able to focus on their education when they're in school, that's very helpful. And that's a savings to the taxpayer in the long run. So. <laughs> well, I, that was big on my list, just, just a, the comment that I, I don't see how you can get a kid out of bed at 4 a.m. and expect to run a program and then have them go into school and, and perform well. And, the, and, and their purpose is to perform well. And, and since and, and the option is not drop hockey, as I, I think that we're long past that one, uh, uh, then I think that that's a very strong reason to, to have a rink where you could have reasonable access. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was just going to say, Chuck started his... Uh, comments earlier kind of raising two questions and thinking you knew the answer and I think he did. The first one was, is this a worthy endeavor, a good concept? And it sounds from the con comments it is. And secondly, is there room on the campus to support it? And, and equally from the comments it sounds like there is. The question still begs of course is where on the campus? And so there has to be some sort of process going forward to sort that piece out. Uh, just for the council's benefit, this comes back to your agenda next, uh, uh, next meeting on the 15th the memorandum, memorandum of understanding. I've made some notes in terms of four or five uh, possible additions or, or clarifications in that document based on what I've heard tonight, and there may be others. So I just wanted to prepare everyone that this will come back to you officially and be ready for your consideration, uh, either with amendment or without. And I'm pleased to work with whomever uh, to come up with possible amendments to improve that document so it's to everyone's satisfaction. Okay. Right, we're all set. In, in closing, I'd like to say members of the public and that are here tonight, uh, welcome to uh, comment on what they heard tonight at this workshop at the podium um, during public comments during the council meeting. Um, and I'd like to uh, address uh, everyone at home that sent emails in. Um, they weren't ignored. I read every one of them. I didn't have time to respond to uh, close to 50 emails in the last uh, several days uh, concerning uh, being in favor of uh, supporting the hockey ring. So there's been a lot of uh, emails sent in to support this effort. And uh, I'm, I'm not ignoring them. I just wanted people to know that uh, 
to the constraints of time, my time, I haven't been able to respond to it. So uh, with that, we'll take a five minute break as they set the mics up uh, for the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You have some good answers. And yeah, I'm not. And, uh, I think we're going in the right